been lucky. I've lived an extraordinary life, exploring the universe and attending the odd party or two. But imagine I could go anywhere and see anything. Well, in this bad boy, I can. Join me on a fantastical trip to my favorite places. After all, why should astronauts have all the fun? Every journey has a beginning, and my own had a very difficult start. At age 21, I received a life-changing diagnosis. Doctors said a disease would steal my independence, and then my life. So I decided to devote what time I had left to studying something truly worthwhile. We've all seen computer animations of the Big Bang. The big explosion. The flying galaxies, and then us. But that's not right. It was far more elegant, and strange. To see what really happened, I'm going to wind back time. As we go back, everything converges. Space itself is shrinking. Unwinding the work of 200 million lifetimes. Until finally, we reach a point of infinite density. The beginning of not just space, but time as well. This is my life's obsession. The Big Bang. There are no fireworks. Light won't exist for hundreds of thousands of years. Our universe begins in darkness, not in light. And time has begun to flow forwards. So the Big Bang must have caused itself. Because without time, nothing can have come before it. All around us heat and energy are spreading at incredible speed. There are slight imperfections, some parts hotter than others. In a billionth of a second, it's grown from smaller than an atom, to a billion kilometers. This rapid inflation can't last forever. The universe is settling into steadier growth, and cooling. 380,000 years after the Big Bang, the light switch of the universe is thrown. A flash so bright we will still be able to detect it in 14 billion years. I have predicted that this flash would contain fluctuations preserved from the Big Bang. Our universe, a magnified version of its earlier tiny self. The tiny imperfections press and then are now causing the universe to expand at different rates. Everything that exists, planets, stars, galaxies, and even us are formed from these imperfections. I am still on the same journey I began years ago. Just as the expanding universe slowed, 
so did the progress of my disease. I've been lucky to live to see some of my predictions confirmed. That first flash of light we saw is now called the cosmic microwave background. You hear it in the crackle of a radio and see it in the static of a television. It reveals wrinkles in the beginning of time. Which is why I believe perfection is so overrated. Nothing in nature is perfect. If it were, we wouldn't exist at all. Any good adventure means taking a few risks. Even if your reputation is at stake. Years ago I made a very public bet with fellow scientist Kip Thorne about one of the most mind-boggling phenomena in the universe. It was a bet I would live to regret. People always asked me what would happen if you fell in a black hole. Well, there's only one way to find out. Hidden in the center of our galaxy, by thick dust clouds, lies one of the more extraordinary things in the universe. Sagittarius A star. A black hole with a mass of 4 million suns. It bends light around itself like a cosmic lens. So massive and dense, that it warps space-time into an infinitely deep well. Its gravity is so strong, not even light can escape. My bet was about what happens to things, sucked into this warped edge of reality. The nearer we get, the stronger gravity pulls. Harder on our front, than our back. Too strong and it will stretch us out like spaghetti. Hopefully we won't get turned into pasta. I'm going to need some serious power to fight the tide of gravity. Go any deeper. Cross the event horizon, and it'll be the last trip I ever make. Nothing escapes out of a black hole. Or does it? Eventually, I realized something could. It became known as Hawking Radiation. You see, space isn't actually empty. Virtual particles and anti particles are popping into existence all the time and canceling each other out. At the edge of a black hole, one particle might fall in, but the other could escape out into space. This would drain energy from the black hole, and eventually cause it to totally disappear. So, I bet that everything that had ever fallen into the black hole, would be lost for good. But that causes a huge problem. You see, you can think of the universe as a giant data file which constantly changes as one event follows the next. But if black holes can destroy part of this data, then the entire file becomes corrupted. And both the past and the future of the universe becomes uncertain. Eventually, 
I realized this must be impossible. So I lost the bet. My latest theory is that the data is not lost, but preserved in turbulence around the black hole. Like a fingerprint. So the universe is safe. For now. But if you ever find yourself heading for your own personal black hole, keep an open mind, and take your chances. You will find a way out of it in the end. Our next destination reminds me of being a young child, full of wonder. Gazing at the stars, I always imagined there was someone up there, looking back. As I grow older I am more convinced than ever, that we are not alone. After a lifetime of wondering, I am helping to lead a new global effort to find out. The Breakthrough Listen Project will scan the nearest million stars for signs of life. But I know just the place to start looking. In recent years we've found thousands of planets outside our solar system. Some are burning hellscapes of fire and larva. Others are solid diamond, bathed in deadly X-rays from a dying star. But some are more like home. Incredibly, we found one only 16 light years away. Right on our doorstep. Please say 3 to C. One of my favorites.